My name is Sasha Monet, and welcome to Pro Truth and Provoking Thought Podcast. Today is Wednesday, October 23rd, 2004. And in this video, I want to talk about Kamala Harris and Bishop um, Bishop Patrick Wooden. Now, he had a lot to say about Miss Harris locking up, um, in particular, black men. And also in this video, Kamala, by her own admission, bragged about how she locked people up for petty crimes. It is a known fact that Kamala has taken pleasure in locking up minorities at a higher um, proportionate rate. Now, recently, Kamala Harris had her lap dog, Barack Obama, to, um, let me see how to put it, to um, scold black men for not giving him the same support that he received in 2008 when he was running for president now kamala wants these same black men to support her and vote for her to their own demise she really is insane why would these black men vote for you when you lock them up at a higher rate than any other race of people now i'm not a democrat or a republican so i'm not voting but say what you want to say about donald trump in my humble opinion, I do think that Trump is pre prejudiced and I do not think that he really cares for black people. However, I can respect Donald Trump, but I do not respect Kamala because she is a liar and that's all she do is lie. And on top of that, she always poses as the friend of black people when she is truly an enemy. And this weekend on her 60th birthday, she attended... Um, what's the name of that church? She attended New Birth Missionary Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia on her birthday this Sunday and posed as a friend to black people. That is a, a predominantly black church. After on that same day where she had a rally and someone shouted in the crowd, Jesus is Lord. And she said, oh, no, you're at the wrong rally. So people... Y'all really need to wake up. Stop voting for this woman. Stop letting her play in y'all face. She don't care nothing about uh, she don't care nothing about black people, and she is on a power trip. Kamala Harris, oh, she's uh running for the vice presidency. I call her Miss Lockup a brother for when she was the AG in California. A, a Negro knew, a black man knew that he was dead in the water. He was dead in the water. Matter of fact, you will need a trial. You might well go into jail if you appear before her because she took pride in locking up black folk. And now all of a sudden she's trying to be sister girl. I'm telling it. Check out her record. She locked us up left and right. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, you did, Kamala. Kamala, however I should pronounce it, you did. And now we're supposed to forget all that stuff and uh and she boasted in california that she was one of the, the power i have as a prosecutor is that with a swipe of my pen i can charge someone with a misdemeanor the lowest level offense possible and by virtue of that swipe of my pen you will have to go to a courthouse and stand in line you will have to come out of pocket and hire an attorney you may get arrested for a few hours. You will be embarrassed in your community. You will miss time from coming onto the Google campus. All because with the swipe of my pen, I've tried, charged you with a crime, which I may choose to dismiss two weeks later. It's an incredible amount of power. And you want to make sure that the people who have this kind of power are taking seriously the responsibility mm -hmm. in terms of understanding, as much as anything, the impact on the people who will be impact, who will be affected by that. Absolutely. You know? now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place. That impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you are in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, 
You did not, and worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, innocent people, you actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so. There is no excuse for that. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. Senator Harris. The reality is for the last 50 years in American justice, just a little more than two and a half percent of the people that are in the penitentiaries got found guilty by a jury. 97 plus percent pled guilty and 84 to 87 percent, depending upon the circumstances, confessed. Now, there are a few that shouldn't be in there because they are actually innocent and somebody did put a case on them. Uh, Kamala Harris has a disproportionate number of people that it passed through her hands where she was in charge of the prosecution where that actually happened. So I find it odd that you have not just the occasional thing, not that your statistical rarity, but you got a, a you have a situation where there are a whole bunch of these instances. We had a woman that was the district attorney here in Memphis where the state Supreme Court, Harvard Law Review, Yale Law Review, Stanford Law Review declared her to be the most corrupt attorney general in the United States of America because she personally had more complaints and findings of prosecutorial misconduct against her as an individual than any of the DA's offices in the rest of the country had collectively over the same period of time. You know, so, I mean, you've got a situation where when it's a rarity, but you've got a lot of them dumped in your lap, something's wrong with you and there is a problem. And I am aware of some very bad miscarriages of justice. And then remember, I got invited to do the interview with her. They wanted to pay me 15K for Kamala Harris a couple months ago. So remember, some people were saying, well, did he make that up? I didn't make it up. They text me and said we wanted to pay. And they, and they was after me for a while. And I said, listen, uh, it got to be live. They wanted an interview, but I wanted it live. You're not mm -hmm. going to pre-record it and splice it because I know how y'all crackers move. So I said, live interview, straight to the people. I don't want your money. I ain't for sale. I think they wanted to test to see if I was a money-hungry Negro. And I said, nah, let's do it. And they never called me back because they wasn't going to let her answer my questions live because she wouldn't have any answers. And I'm going to tell you this. This is what black people are not paying attention to. If Kamala Harris wins, we really going to catch hell. You know why? She going to make us pay for everybody who exposed the fact that she was never black. Do you feel me? She has a grudge and an ax to grind. Black people ain't getting shit if Kamala Harris get elected. You weren't going to get it anyway. Stay with me. Yeah. But it was a neutral <laughs> neglect. You feel me? That would have been a, a spiteful be neglect. Not, thank you. It would have been a benign neglect. Now it's a spiteful neglect. I'm going to get you ninjas back God, for exposing man. the fact that I was never black. Black people ain't going to get nothing. <laughs>